What's up guys? As a follow-up to my last video about Fallout 4 talking about the Heather Kasdan mod, I wanted to cover three more mods I've been playing with recently that I highly recommend. And these are three that I don't see covered a whole lot in other mod review type videos, and so I thought that would be useful to mention them to people in case you'd not heard of them, because some of them I, despite having 2,000 hours into this game, hadn't actually come across until somewhat recently. I would class all three of these as utility mods, meaning they don't add new quests, they're not going to change something major about the game. Each of them has a relatively simple function, but I think it's a really useful one that I highly recommend. The first two I would call kind of quality of life mods, they just really make the game a little smoother. And the third one is conditional, kind of situational, but when you need it, you need it. I'll get into that in a minute. So the first one to talk about is called Junk to Components. Basically what this mod does is it goes through your inventory and any junk stuff that you're carrying around like desk fans, makeshift batteries, stuff that's heavy that can be broken down into components. When you go up to any workbench, a weapons bench, armor bench, a chemistry station, you can hit an additional button. On the Xbox it's the Y button uh, and it will break down everything that can be broken down in your inventory that's in junk into their raw components. Really useful, it's a great shorthand for otherwise having to go to a settlement and drop all your stuff on the ground and then go into settlement building mode and scrap all of them. It's just faster. And it makes it so that when you're at a workbench, even in the wild, while you're wandering around not at a settlement, you can still lighten your load. I've had cases where I'm near being encumbered and I executed the junk to components and I dropped like 20 or 30 pounds of stuff out of my inventory if I've really been hoarding and it's been a while since I've unloaded. So really useful mod in that way. And if you ever want to pick something up that you don't want it to do that to, there is an extra button you can hit. I think it's X on Xbox as you're picking something up where it basically tells the mod to mark it as something that you don't want to scrap. And then the next time you go to a workbench to do the scrap everything, the mod will be smart enough to know not to scrap anything you've marked. Uh, simple examples of where you might want to do that. When you find, say, gold bars, those are worth a lot more to sell as the gold bar than they are when they're broken down into just gold components. Uh, if you want to role play a little bit in survival mode, like you have your character pick up a coffee maker and you want to carry that around to make coffee and you don't want that broken down, whatever your reason is, you can mark things uh, so that they don't get broken down. Really love this mod it was definitely one of the ones where the first time i installed it and used it i was like well that's a permanent fixture in my game um, so i'll include links in the description if you want to check that one out the next one i want to talk about is called what should have been on bethesda.net there's actually not a whole lot of description under this mod of what it will do other than the mod author saying that he adds a lot of things into the game that he feels should have been there from the beginning a couple quick things that it says that it does. It adds more types of calibers that you can chamber your pipe weapons into. One of my favorite aspects of the mod actually is that it makes it so when you go to a cooking station, you can do more things with pre-war food like instant mash or pork and beans and stuff like that. Unless you're in a survival run and even then, you probably don't have a whole lot of use for stuff like pork and beans cans outside of the very beginning of the game because they add a lot of rads, they don't give you a whole lot of hit points. Unless you're desperate, you probably don't use them. And if you've ever thought to yourself, I wish there was a way to make these more useful, this mod does that. So you can take things like, say, Instamash, and at a cooking station, you can turn it into cooked Instamash by combining some water uh, with it. And it's actually lower rads when you eat it and much higher HP uh, benefits that you get from it, which makes picking up pre-war food a heck of a lot more useful. One other thing the mod does that I really like is it makes it so that, have you ever found where like certain recipes will only work with dirty water and not clean water or vice versa? And you've thought like that doesn't really make any sense. Well, this mod agrees. And another thing that this mod will do is it makes alternate recipes for certain things so that if it was going to only allow dirty water to work, there's an alternate recipe to make the same item using purified water and little variations like that with stuff that didn't really make sense before. I find that really useful. It does unlock options to also craft certain things that I don't totally understand the point to, such as thermal adhesive. Uh, it takes up several of your adhesives to make it, and it's not clear what it does that is so different. But you can ignore any of those that you don't want to use. It's a pretty lightweight mod. It's only 290 kilobytes, so I mean, it adds basically nothing to your mod limit size if you're on console. 
And I just think that some of the features like that are really nice, especially if you're in a survival run. But even if you're not, uh, if you're just looking at a non-survival run, you're looking at food just for healing, it's really nice for what it unlocks for, or especially early game, what you can do with components that you probably otherwise are like meh and don't pick up very often. The third one I want to talk about today is called Survival Special Bug Remover. What this does is it addresses a bug that you may go the whole game with never encountering or you may get this. And it's a bug that's often talked about in forums where things that change your stats like a penalty or something sometimes aren't temporary like they're supposed to be and end up sticking and becoming permanent. One keen example of this is if you get stung by a rad scorpion or a stingwing, they put venom in you that poisons you, and I think it's for like five-ish seconds. It does negative five to your perception. The problem is if you use Medex, which actually adds poison resist, if you take that after being poisoned, it bugs the game out. And at the point where the poison is supposed to wear off and your perception is supposed to go back to normal, it doesn't, and then you're stuck with this permanent penalty in the game. Uh, that can also happen if you're using... Uh, if you ever use cheat codes, so I've been in this case once before where say it's been like 40 minutes since you saved and then you're kind of low level and you run into a big rad scorpion and it hits you once and you don't have any healing items that are going to heal you fast enough and you're like, shoot, it's probably going to kill me and I do not want to do 40 minutes over again. And so you activate God mode, uh, whether through the command console on the PC or if you have the cheat terminal on Xbox or PlayStation. Sadly, this will cause the same bug. If you have God Mode on while you're poisoned, it won't let the poison release properly, and you can wound up with the same bug. Now on PC, people have console commands that you can enter uh, to try to relieve this, but even at that, some people say it's a little difficult to figure out exactly what variables to be using in any case, whether you're on PC and can do it but would rather not be entering console commands, or if you're on Xbox or PlayStation and are saying, I don't have the console command, so how do I fix this? This mod adds a holotape that you can find right by the entrance to Vault 101. And basically the mod author recommends remove any equipment that is changing anything about your stats. And then make sure that you don't have effects like well-rested and stuff like that that also can soft change your stats. And then you run the holotape. You pick which attribute is being affected, and it will run some sort of script that removes whatever status effects are happening. One thing I will add as a note, you might have to use the holotape multiple times. Um, when I had this issue going on with one of my characters, he had a base perception of 7, and it was stuck at 1 uh, because of this bug. When I ran the holotape the first time, my perception was still 1, so at first it looked like the mod didn't work. I ran it a second time, and my perception went up to four, but still showed the minus symbol, like something was lowering it. And when I ran the holotape a third time, then my perception went back up to seven and there was no minus sign anymore. So my character was fixed, if you will. Um, that was really great because when I look back to, well, what save file, you know, I hadn't been paying attention to my stats for a while. So it was like, who knows how long this has affected my perception. And it was hours and hours back before that was an issue. I did not want to have to backtrack. This mod solves that uh, in a very lightweight and simple way, and you can just leave the holotape in your inventory the rest of the game in case that ever comes up again. And if it never comes up again, again, this is another very lightweight mod that really doesn't add much to your load order to have it just in case you need it. Um, I really recommend it. Like I said in the beginning, this is kind of situational. You might go the whole game never needing this, but man, if you need it, this is the best way I have found to relieve this particular problem. So anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Those are, like I said, three mods that I don't see talked about very often that I think deserve their due. And while I have played the game for many hours on PC, I am more recently trying it again on Xbox. And all of these are available uh, on Bethesda.net for Xbox in addition to the Nexus for PC. And I really recommend them. I think they add a lot of useful utility into the game. And like I said about the first two, to me, they're just a permanent load order item now because of what they add into the game. Uh, that's just really nice. Leave your comments below if you have other mod suggestions that you think I should cover or you want to recommend to other people following this video. And otherwise, guys, I'll catch you in the next one.